What's up everybody in YouTube land? This is Jose Ortiz from PetRockMedia.com once again. And today we're going to bring you a documentary review from HBO Documentaries entitled I Love You, Now Die. We'll make a little bit more sense about that here in a bit. Okay guys, so before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel and punch that bell icon so you're notified each and every time we post a video or go live. Okay guys, so the title may seem a little crazy and a little bit awkward, however this documentary courtesy of HBO Documentaries is pretty, pretty fantastic. Now, about six years ago, there was a case, or there was actually a, a suicide um, that happened up in Massachusetts, and it involved a gentleman by the name of Conrad Roy, and his girlfriend at the time, Michelle Carter. Now, I'm going to be utilizing my phone here to, to read my notes because I don't want to get any of this information wrong. So, the gentleman Conrad Henry Roy III was uh, an American child. He was 18 years old at the time. Had suffered uh, a little bit from depression and things like that. And he tragically took his own life by means of uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. He parked his truck in the back of a Super Kmart, um, bought a gas-powered generator, turned it on, rigged it up in his truck and stayed in there until he ultimately took his last breath. Now, the main reason why this case gained tons of media publicity and tons of media attention, not only because of the fact that it was a suicide, but why it gained more nationally syndicated media attention is because of the fact that his girlfriend at the time, Michelle Carter, texted him to do so. Now, the documentary goes in, uh, is in two parts, and it goes into detail in the first part of how she manipulated him, how she forced him into it. There was a time where he decided to no longer do it, and he actually got out of the truck, and then she texted him back, you get back in there, you effing get back in there, and finish it, so to speak. So that is where the trial really takes a turn, and that's where, ultimately, um, people start viewing her in her own mind. Now, there are no spoilers because you can look this case up and you can see the verdict, you can see the sentencing, the appeals, all that stuff. So you can see that. So there really is no spoiler, if you will. Now, the reason why this documentary to me is a thumbs up and it's a definitely must watch is because of how both parts kind of mesh, but then counterbalance themselves. Now, what I mean by that is that the very, very first part of the documentary series, they're both about an hour and a half long, paints the young lady, Michelle Carter, a complete monster, if you will, her text messages, her overall obsessiveness with him, texting him over and over, her incessant need of attention after everything happened, um, her friends stating that she just was doing things for attention. She um, put together this rally, a softball game, um, to raise awareness of depression and suicide in memory of her now deceased boyfriend, uh, Conrad Roy. Now, I won't tell you much about how the documentary goes into specifics, but it's very, very well done. If you're a fan of HBO documentaries, you'll know that they do amazing work. And this uh, documentary, in my opinion, is unlike no other in the sense that both parts paint two completely different stories. And it's left up to you to kind of decide what side of the fence you're on. As I said, part one kind of paints uh, the young lady, Michelle Carter, who was 17 at the time, paints her in the light of all of it being on her. And then the second part paints the demons that the young man was fighting. His depression, his attempted suicide, his abuse at home by his father, his parents are divorced, so that played a big role in it. His schooling, just overall everything kind of plays out in the second part. So you get the first part of her, you get the second part of the young man, and then you're left kind of pulling away and kind of making the decision on your own if she should have been found guilty or if she should have been found innocent of manslaughter now this brings into great question of can your words be used against you to find you guilty in in um kind of a decision based off of somebody else what they've done the defending attorney states if i tell you to jump off a bridge and then later on you do it am i held liable for you jumping off the bridge did i push you over the edge and should i be found guilty of involuntary manslaughter should my words now mean something to you and then the flip side, these are actual text messages and text messages can be consistently taken out of context. So should they be doing that to attempt to try to get a verdict of guilty? Now I'm gonna save my opinion because again, it is my opinion, but what I would like for you guys to do is watch the documentary if you have HBO. I'm gonna link uh, the documentary down below. Watch it, make a decision of what, what you think. I personally um, have some doubts and everything like that. 
I personally um, enjoyed watching this documentary because it does paint the picture of should your text messages and should your thoughts and uh, and words through text be held against you if something were to happen. Now we know in criminal court and criminal law that if you are a part of a party that does something illegal, you're held liable as well and just as responsible. So if you're in a car with a group of friends and they go and rob a bank and somebody dies, you're now held liable for that as well because you were in the car at the same time. You may not have even known it was going to happen, but if you're there, you're just as guilty as the person that pulled the trigger. Now that can vary from state to state, but still, now we're looking at it in a different limelight of can text messages now do that? So this documentary is very, very, very interesting. I highly recommend you watch it. If this is something that interests you, uh, true crime, things like that, this case was very, very groundbreaking because of the verdict, because of you know the first time that somebody actually took their own life based off of text messages and it gained uh, wide popularity in the media. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you watched the documentary, let me know what you think. If you have not watched the documentary, let me know if you're going to check it out. Again, it is on HBO, so some of you may not have it, but I'm sure if you YouTube it, you can find some clips. Um, and if you do a quick internet search, you'll find um, the case readings and things like that, and you can make your own decision of how you feel about this particular case. But once again, guys, this is Jose Ortiz with PetRockMedia.com. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing, punching that bell icon, give me a thumbs up, two thumbs down, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.